Hi there! In 7th grade, we learned that cells make up a tissue. Tissues make up an organ. And organs make up a system. In this video, we will get to know how the individual cells of the reproductive system work. The reproductive system of humans does not fully become active until an individual reaches puberty. Most organ systems of the body show little differences in the male and female organs, except in the case of the reproductive system. There are major differences between the male and the female reproductive systems, although they also share several similarities. The male and female reproductive organs are developed from the same embryological structures, and some hormones are the same for both, although they produce different responses. Reproduction is an essential characteristic of living organisms, and functional male and female reproductive systems are necessary for humans to reproduce. The reproductive system performs the following functions. 1. Production of gametes 2. Fertilization 3 development and nourishment of a new individual, and four, production of reproductive hormones. Let's begin with the male reproductive system. The male reproductive system performs the following functions. Secretion of the male sex hormones, production of sperm cells, and transfer of sperm cells. The male reproductive system includes the testis, scrotum, penis, vas deferens, urethra, seminal vesicle, and prostate gland. The male gonads are the testis hanging in the scrotum. Sperm production requires a slightly lower temperature than the human body. This is why the scrotum hangs loosely outside the body cavity. However, when the testis fails to descend, it leads to sterility because of the inhibiting effect of normal body temperature on sperm development. The scrotum consists of skin. In cold temperatures, the scrotum becomes firm and wrinkled, reducing the overall size of the scrotum. The testes are organs within the scrotum, each about 4 to 5 centimeters long, and are composed of cone-shaped lobules that contain seminiferous tubules where the sperm cells develop. The epididymis is a tightly coiled series of thread-like tubules that form a comma-shaped structure at the back of the testes. The sperm cells continue to mature along this tube. The vas deferens emerges from the epididymis and ascends along the back of the testes to become associated with the blood vessels and nerves. The ejaculatory duct connects into the prostate gland and ends by joining the urethra within the prostate gland. The urethra is a pathway for both urine and male reproductive fluids, but these do not exit the urethra at the same time. Thus, there is no mixing. The male urethra connects from the urinary bladder to the distal end of the penis. While seminal fluid passes through the urethra, a reflex causes the urinary sphincter muscles to contract tightly to keep urine from passing the urinary bladder through the urethra. The penis is only an accessory organ for reproduction and not the reproductive organ itself as most people think. It is the organ for copulation and it functions in the transfer of sperm cells from the male to the vagina of the female. The penis is composed of erectile tissues. The engorgement of the erectile tissue with blood causes the penis to enlarge and become firm in a process called erection. Testosterone is the main male sex hormone secreted by the testes. This hormone is responsible for the normal development of the organs of the male reproductive system. It also brings about the changes experienced during puberty. The changes that appear at 10 to 14 years of age 
eventually distinguish the male secondary characteristics. Secondary male characteristics include growth of facial, underarm, chest, pubic, and body hair, enlargement of the voice box resulting to deepening of the voice, development of the male musculature and genitals, and increased secretion of sweat and oil resulting to acne. Moreover, testosterone is responsible for male's muscular strength. This is why some athletes take steroids that contain testosterone or other similar compounds. However, taking steroids have been proven to produce harmful effects and may even result to mental problems. Alright, that's all for the male reproductive system. Let's proceed to the female reproductive system. The female reproductive system has the following functions. Production of female sex cells. Production of female sex hormones. Reception of sperm cells from the male. And nurturing the development of and providing nourishment for the new individual. The female reproductive system performs female sexual and childbearing functions. It consists of a pair of gonads or the ovaries, fallopian tubes or oviducts, the uterus, the vagina, and the external genitalia or the vulva. There are two ovaries, each comparable to the size of an almond nut in every female. The ovary contains an ovarian follicle, which contains an oocyte or the female germ cell. When follicles mature, they expand and rupture to release the egg. This process is called ovulation. After ovulation, the remaining cells of the ruptured follicle transform into a glandular structure known as the corpus luteum. The fallopian tubes, also called uterine tubes, extend from the area of the ovaries to the uterus. The long and thin processes called fimbriae, surround the opening of each uterine tube. Fertilization usually occurs in the part of the fallopian tube near the ovary. The uterus is as big as a medium-sized pear. The part of the uterus above and near the entrance of the fallopian tubes is called the fundus. The main part is called the body, and the narrower part is the cervix. Internally, the uterine cavity continues through the cervix as the cervical canal, which opens into the vagina. The vagina is the female organ for copulation, and it functions to receive the penis during intercourse. It also allows menstrual flow and childbirth. This extends from the uterus to the outside of the body. In young females, the vaginal opening is covered by a thin mucous membrane called the hymen. The hymen can completely close the vaginal opening, in which case it must be removed to allow menstrual flow. This can be torn at some earlier time in a young female's life during a variety of activities, which may include strenuous exercise. The condition of the hymen is therefore not a reliable indicator of virginity. Did you know that a woman's ovaries contain follicles that nurture eggs and produce sex hormones? The pair of ovaries, lying on the right and left depressions of the upper pelvic cavity, produces the mature egg cell. This mature egg cell is swept by the tiny finger-like projections of the oviducts or fallopian tubes. The egg moves along this tube with the help of the tiny hair or cilia that line the fallopian tubes. These tubes extend until the uterus. The uterus, an inverted pear-shaped muscular organ, is where the embryo attaches, specifically on its inner wall, the endometrium. A female is considered pregnant when successful implantation happens. The uterus opens into the vagina, which receives the penis during intercourse and serves as the birth canal. The cervix an important reproductive part during birthing is the neck of the uterus leading to the vaginal canal. It dilates or opens before the delivery of a female. 
The vagina, on the other hand, is a long elastic muscular canal where menstrual blood and tissues are expelled from the body. The walls of the vagina provide lubrication and it receives the penis during copulation. This organ also expands during intercourse and childbirth. Estrogen is one of the two main sex hormones that women have. The other one is progesterone. Estrogen is responsible for female physical features and reproduction. Men have estrogen too, but in smaller amounts. Estrogen helps control the menstrual cycle and is important for childbearing. Estrogen helps bring about the physical changes that turn a girl into a woman during puberty. The ovaries, which produce eggs, are the main source of estrogen from a woman's body. Secondary female characteristics developed during puberty include growth of underarm and pubic hair, body changes such as breast development, wider hips and a smaller waist, the beginning of menstruation, and increased secretion of sweat and oil. Hormones such as testosterone and estrogen play a great role in the body. Hormones are secreted by endocrine glands. Many endocrine glands make up your endocrine system. Hormones are carried into the bloodstream throughout the body. When a hormone in the blood reaches the target organ, it produces a significant effect. Moreover, the endocrine system sends signals all over the body, much like the nervous system. However, unlike the instant responses activated by the nervous system, the effects can take a few hours or even weeks. One function of this system is to regulate reproduction and other closely associated phenomena. This system also helps you to cope with the changes in the environment. In addition, the endocrine system is responsible for many reactions such as influencing how your heart beats, how your bones and tissues develop, and even your capacity to have a baby. It also helps control mood, growth, and development and plays an essential role in the occurrence of disorders such as diabetes, thyroid diseases, growth disorders, and sexual dysfunctions. Both men and women produce hormones in the same areas with one exception, the reproductive glands. Extra male hormones are produced in the testes, while female hormones are produced in the ovaries. In terms of their effects on the body, they can also vary. Some hormones have short-term effects, while other hormones have influence even in the long term, such as those that control our growth and the changes at the onset of puberty. During puberty, there are many hormonal changes that happen in your body. One moment you are laughing, and then suddenly you feel like crying. Sudden mood swings are relatively caused by the increasing number of hormones in the body at this stage. It is therefore important to maintain a positive outlook in life and remember that these changes are only temporary and will stabilize with time. Another significant fact about hormones is that they act in very small amounts. If the organ and hormones do not produce the regulated amount of chemicals in your body, it may result to an abnormality. This condition is called hormonal imbalance. An increase or decrease in the amount of hormones may have a significant effect to the body. Alright, here's a quick recap. The reproductive system is responsible for production of gametes, fertilization, development and nourishment of a new individual, and production of reproductive hormones. The organ for copulation in males is the penis and the vagina for females. The endocrine system secretes hormones to regulate reproduction. The main sex hormone for females is estrogen and testosterone for males. That's all for now. 
We will be discussing about feedback mechanisms involved in regulating processes in the female reproductive system in our next video, so stay tuned! See you on our next video and don't forget to keep your minds busy! If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification icon for more videos like this.